Have you guys ever struggled with the balance between YOLO, F it, I'm about to buy that thing today because I deserve and wait a minute, let me calm down. Like I still got 40 plus years, you know, God willing um, to live, right? I want to talk about kind of that balance and I also want to talk about the side of money that people always ignore, okay? We always talk about budgeting, like invest your money and don't spend a lot of money, but we never talk about the people who literally have a problem spending money, right? Like money anxiety. Um, so I want to talk about that because that is something that I personally still struggle with. So I want to talk about that. Let's get into all of that and more. It's Crystal with the Cash Compass. All right, welcome and welcome back. I am here to teach you all the things that you should have learned in school about money, but for whatever reason, they forgot to mention it. If you love all things economics, personal finance, and investing, you'll definitely want to hit that button down below. Some people say just a tip. I say just a tap, mama. <laughs> it's free. I always got you. You'll never have to pay for that. As long as you're around here, I'm going to pay for it for you. Let's get into it. All right, so like I said in the intro, obviously spending too much money is a problem. Um, I think that we've addressed that side enough, but money anxiety is real and spending money, um, it could be a traumatic thing, right? Like personally, I think the reason why I have problems spending money is because when I was 17, that's when the recession happened, right? Um, back in 2008. And, uh, you know, both my parents had lost their jobs. Like, it was actually pretty ghetto, right? So I think I kind of went through that and, you know, right into adulthood when I was going into college, I was just like, all right, I got to be conservative. I can't spend too much money. Like, you never know when you might lose you know, that source of income and it really puts you in a jacked up position, right? So I think that that might be what has triggered this. Honestly, I don't know. I don't know if I would have been like this even without that recession because people in my family do have a history of also being fiscally conservative. We're not going to call it cheap, right? We don't do that. We're fiscally conservative around here. <laughs> so um, I don't know if that was going to always be my faith, but I definitely do think about that time and think about the importance of having multiple streams of income and, you know, all that jazz but because of that i have problems spending money like i i don't really know the balance between yolo and okay you know we're saving and working on our future okay some people have the opposite problem right they're more towards the yolo spectrum and they're just kind of spending money for the hell of it and there's other people on the other side of it like me who is like no must prepare must be careful must not do it you know must not enjoy life really because you do kind of take away from life because you're always wondering about what's going to happen in the future and you want to make sure you're prepared for the what if situations right so i'm going to talk about kind of like how i've worked through that uh right now in general i think people who have money anxiety number one may have had something traumatic happen to them like i've explained where i felt like i really had to take care of myself ever since i was 17 i never really had any help um like financially of course i've had help you know emotionally physically whatever but like financial support it was literally just me um and that's tough you know i always feel like i have to be the one to take care of things or hold it down like i don't want to lose my job because like i you know i take care of people right um where was i going with that <laughs> so i think identifying what exactly caused that in your life could definitely help you kind of address it right so for example with me uh, the, with the whole recession thing I, for me to kind of get around that it's like okay i just know all right let me just kind of calculate everything out right like i know that if anything bad happens i can live for x amount of months and i'll be fine but i'll need to get some sort of income you know later on so you know my why is basically because i know that i always want to make sure that i don't end up in that kind of situation right um but just preparing for that has helped me kind of manage better like i say okay this is the money aside just in case something bad happens and i can hold it down for a few months i don't think it would take more than a few months for me to find a job and i plus i have youtube and i could go even harder on youtube so having like these kind of multiple exit exit strategies in the event that something happens uh to my income like my mainstream of income has definitely given me more of a relief so identify on both ends of the spectrum right identify either why you get anxiety about spending money or maybe you have like super buyer's remorse and maybe tackle that right <clears throat> maybe you had a similar situation that i had and the preparation is just all you need um <clears throat> but then also under <clears throat> i do not have corona 
but also understand that you cannot absolutely blah, blah, absolutely deprive yourself right so um i put on a couple of hundred dollars aside every month to just buy something for myself you know like whether it's like just personal care items some clothes you know i put some money aside every month just to take care of myself but that's tracked right so on both ends of the spectrum even if you're somebody who's always spending like crazy or someone who like literally has problems with spending money if you have a budget honestly that is going to help you like it, it's going to keep everything in line like i can get relief by saying okay I actually was under budget this month, so I can use that extra money to either save if I want to be, you know, responsible, but maybe I'll have a month where I'm like, forget it. Like, I just want to, you know, I want to spend it. Like, I want to buy that. I want to go here. I want to eat out. Like, you could do that. Knowing exactly what's going in and out of your account is super, super important. Um, there was actually a time, believe it or not, like, I feel like I have gone through multiple levels of this spectrum but um there was a time when i was in college and i you know i was getting good financial aid i had a decent job i was working at a bank um so i was always buying stuff you know like i felt comfortable at that point but then i felt too comfortable right and i was just spending money and i would literally have moments where i didn't want to check my account because i already knew what the business was right i already know what kind of weekend i had like <laughs> i don't want to look at that account mm -mm. I'm good, love. You know, like, I totally hated that for myself. Um, it was not a good feeling, you know? So, kind of, just kind of recognizing where you're at and really tracking everything that's going in and out of your account without being afraid, um, I think that kind of helps get you somewhere towards the middle of that spectrum. A lot of people might not have anxiety spending money, like getting their nails done, getting your hair done, buying clothes, going to brunch. But they have like anxiety about investing, right? So even within money, you can be on both ends of the spectrum depending on what we're talking about. So like when it comes to you hanging out, you might not give a damn, right? You might just mm, 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 make it rain. But when it comes to investing, you're like, ooh, I don't know. I could lose my money. I, I, I. Like all these different things come in your head and you're like, I don't want to do that, you know? So then at that point, it becomes a matter of education. If you're scared or if you're worried about losing money, that may mean you need to do some more research. Of course, with all the stuff that is going on right now, like I feel like the finance community has just been like on fire, really, because it's like there's Dodge Coin or Deutsche Coin. I don't know how to pronounce it. Don't don't come at me, okay? But there's that. There was Reddit. Uh, there's a Stimmies. Like I mean, there's been so much like financial stimulation um, that you might feel like you have a little bit of FOMO, right? That fear of missing out. I want to get in. I want to do something. But then you get anxiety because you don't want to put your money in there because you don't really know what's going on in there, right? So it starts with getting educated. There's so many free resources on here if you want to learn about investing. Maybe if you have a fear that may mean that speculative you know bets would not might not be might not be a thing right like i've told you guys before there's kind of three different classes i think of when it comes to money saving right like uh wealth preservation investing and speculation okay if you are a little bit nervous and you're like, I don't want to lose my money, uh, whatever, then maybe speculative, you know, um, I don't want to call it investing because it's a speculation, but maybe speculation is not going to be your thing, okay? Maybe you are going to benefit better from actually knowing what companies you're investing in, actually believing in the company or believing in the crypto or believing in the real estate, whatever it is that you're spending your money on to make an investment. Maybe you would get more value and more peace of mind investing in something you actually believe in, not just investing in something because you want to jump on the train and make gains okay i think when you really truly believe in something even if it's not going good right now like let's say you believe in i don't know zoom like i talked about in this video up here is it up here yes up here um and maybe you believe in zoom right and maybe you think it's gonna be like really revolutionary going forward people are gonna be working from home more like we this whole pandemic has definitely changed the way we work and you feel like you know what no matter what, I have faith in this company. Even if they start performing for poorly, right? Even if the stock starts going down, you've read their 10K because I showed you how to, you know, read the 10K in that video. You trust this company. You've looked at their forward-looking statements and you think they have potential to really do the damn thing. So if it's going down right now, it's not going to make you nervous because you you have faith in the company um, versus just putting money in there because it's the hot thing to do right now. And then, yeah, of course, you're going to get nervous. Um, there's a greed and fear scale. 
but fear is so much stronger than greed so when you see it going down you might get fearful and you might want to sell everything right um so if that sounds like you maybe try to look into more value investing value stocks um dividends uh, they pay dividends out that way you know you're getting at least some sort of return every single year you're not just depending on stock growth um or if you like into real estate do extensive research in your neighborhoods and try to figure out what area you like the most you know what area you think is up and coming and you're gonna make the most money off of like education is so important i know sometimes i'll be talking smack about like going to school um but you know school is only one part of the education pie there's so many books there's so many courses there's so much youtube channels that you could go on to get you information that way you could feel more comfortable when you're making decisions so if that's you look into watching some of my videos i have like an investing playlist i'll pop up here I have an economics playlist. I always pop up there. Um, I have a budgeting. I have playlists for your ass. Okay, so go ahead and check those things out. Another reason why I am feel like I hesitate of spending is because I feel like I'm not prepared enough for like my retirement or whatever. So maybe establish checkpoints. Like that's what I do. So I'm like, okay, if I save X amount of money, I can spend this portion. You know, like when I get my extra check, I'm gonna put away 51% to my savings and the other 49 I'm gonna just spend it and I'm not gonna feel bad about it you know um, I'm gonna just ball out and give it to myself because I deserve it I think people who are like on my end of the boat where they are like fearful of spending I think we just realize how expensive the world is I not enough people truly understand like it's not sustainable you know like I think about being a woman and having to get my hair done my nails done my eyebrows you know the waxing you know all of that kind of stuff we're talking hundreds of dollars a month okay I make six figures and I really struggle to do that every single month because I just cannot justify it um, and I think people who are on this end of the spectrum they feel the same way it's like uh, hello, like I literally, <laughs> it's expensive, you know, people who are more on the YOLO side, they don't, they don't necessarily care maybe, you know, and if you are on any end of the spectrum, I cannot say this word to save my life. If you're on any end of the spectrum, drop it in the comments below how you kind of navigate through that. Um, I'm actually curious to see if anybody is like me because I feel like most people don't talk about this, right? About having fear of spending too much money. You know, it's it's hard because it's like you want to have these nice things. You want to go on vacation. You want to do all this fun stuff. Like, you guys, I've literally spent, I think, almost $12,000 on vacations um, when it like, since 2018. Because I have, like, mints, which I really, really like. Um, $12,000 or $11,000 on vacationing, okay, on travel. So I don't have that anxiety when it comes to certain things, okay? It's literally, I don't know. <laughs> A little bit of it is from investing, a little bit of it is from just like spending money on things that I know I'm not even going to remember about years from now, right? Um, but the reality is life is really expensive. It's getting harder to maintain out here. Housing prices are rising. The clothes that you buy, like I mean, I feel like I'm now starting to get more into like, okay, I have to spend $50 on every item of clothing, you know, because I want good quality. I don't want it to like shred up in the washing machine, but that's expensive. You know, I get two shirts. I'm at $100. I'm going to get tired of those two shirts in two months. I mean, it's hard to maintain. Um, and that's why it's really important to keep on increasing your revenue too. That way these things don't feel like a burden, you know? Um, when I buy things, I don't want it to feel like a burden. Like, I, I need a new car, right? And I'm really thinking about buying a new car. I really would like a Mercedes. That's like my dream, right? Um, but I don't think it would be fun to afford right now. Like, I don't, I don't see myself comfortably affording that. So I might get another Toyota. I don't really know. I haven't thought about it. I might keep this car for another two, three years. Like, that's kind of how I'm feeling. <laughs> I don't know. But yeah, so I feel like I'm talking all over the place. This is more like a chill kind of, you know, me talking to you type of video. Um... But yeah, it's it's hard. It's hard. I think really what helped me the most is putting money aside and saying, no, 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 this is exclusively for me. And I don't feel guilt about it. And you got to do it quickly. That's another thing. I, this video is getting long. <laughs> That's another thing, though. Um, When it comes to like buying something, if you need it, buy it right then and there. I spend too much time on my online basket. I'll be shopping. I add everything to the cart. I'm like, mm, okay, two hundred dollars. I don't know. I take things out, and then I still don't buy it, right? So just, just buy it. You have to buy it and not even think about it. If you're the person who has trouble spending too much money, right? Um, because if you don't do that, it's gonna be problematic, and you're gonna feel the anxiety creep back up again. You know? 
but let me know you guys what you guys think uh do you guys have money anxiety do you spend too much or too little how do you guys get around doing that let me know because i want to hear from you but that will do it if you like this video please like this video and be sure to share it with your friends your auntie your mama everybody and if you have anything else going on you know what to do go ahead and binge watch me until next time keep your money up